Welcome to Break Free from Corporate, the only podcast dedicated to bringing you business success secrets from leading entrepreneurs with one thing in common. They left the corporate world, became their own boss, and are now living incredible lives. To access previous and all future episodes, visit BreakFreeFromCorporate.com and subscribe today. Well, hi, everyone. This is Gavin Sequeira here from BreakFreeFromCorporate.com, and I'm really glad that you could join us on this podcast today. I'm really excited about the guest that we're about to introduce to you today. She's someone that I've worked with on and off over the last couple of years, and I've seen her build a business from scratch to a very successful practice all over the country right now. She's in the automation game. She helps people's businesses automate, and she's just doing a fantastic job right now. She's very dynamic, and she's just doing all the right things. And I think you're going to learn a lot of these next few minutes, especially as she goes through all the challenges that she's faced leading up to where she is today. So sit back, take plenty of notes, and I hope you enjoy this. So Christy, thank you very much for joining us and being part of this podcast. No problem at all, Gavin. Anything for you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, see, a lot of our listeners that are joining us, well, they all have something in common. They've either all been in corporate jobs or they are in their, their jobs at the moment and they're looking at what lies beyond their day job. Is there a potential for them to do something else? Maybe they've got a passion in something they'd like to get into. They just haven't found a way to get there yet or they haven't been inspired enough to take that step. And I guess what we're doing on this podcast is sharing your story because I know that you were one of those people who used to be in corporate, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago now. And then you have made the transition and uh, I'd love to hear, wouldn't mind sharing with our audience where you were, what you were doing, very briefly, what caused you to kind of get from where you were back then to where you are now and I'm sure you've gone through a bit of a journey. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, so out of university I took a job in pharmaceuticals um, mm -hmm. and I was working in um, commercial clinical research right. uh, and it was a really, really rewarding job but it was also a really small wheel in a really, really big machine. And um, at the time, I loved the people I was around and they were incredibly smart, switched on people, but I really felt that there was a better way to do what it was that I was doing mm -hmm. um, and that there was a tool out there that I could create that would basically really help clinical research in Australia, which is what my job was about. So I spent um, 18 months with two business partners um, on weekends and Christmas holidays and weeknights, basically building um, an online directory for uh, clinical research. And wow. at, the, at the beginning of, uh, gosh, what year is it? It's 2014. <laughs> at the beginning of 2012, um, I walked out of my really cushy six-figure corporate job to basically to start this business full-time. And I couldn't do both because there was a, a commercial conflict of interest. Ah, that's a good point. Yep. Okay, let's pause for a sec. Uh, I want to go back to your cushy corporate six-figure income job because <laughs> a lot of people... So do I. Yeah, <laughs> no, not really. No, no. But a lot of people who are listening to this are probably thinking, why on earth would you even consider leaving something like that? Was it a case of you needed a, a bigger challenge or you just needed one of those people that couldn't sit still? Honestly, I loved the company I worked for. Um, I, I can't say that sincerely enough. They were doing really good work and... Yep. You know, there were there were fantastic perks as well. It was a boom time for that company. Um, but I grew up in a small business family and I've always been a little bit, I guess, left field as far as, you know, I'm, I'm quite outdoorsy and I'm quite a bit of a tomboy and I wanted a job that was going to give me a lot more flexibility and the role that I had, I pretty much could work in Sydney, the East Coast of the US or Europe. Um, but everywhere I was going to live was really high cost of living. Right. Um, and so I sort of thought, well, you know, this is nice, but the future for me in this industry is 30 years of Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, a lot of light, late night telecons with overseas teams. And even though the work, work was rewarding, I just couldn't face <laughs> three Having to do that. Of it. <laughs> yeah. So right. I, and it was a great job. That's the insane thing about it all. It's really, really good team to work on. So it was more about a lifestyle choice and wanting to have something that was basically going to give me flexibility to go and chase dreams that weren't kind of career orientated. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, that, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's, everyone has a reason why they make choices in life and 
lifestyle is a pretty good reason to do that. Mm, I think it's it's interesting. We had um, plenty of money and and a good quality of life, but yeah, I just wanted something more. Which I I mean, it makes perfect sense now. But at the time, I was surprised that I even had the aspiration of something beyond what I had because what I had was fantastic. Yeah, and then you mentioned you you went into this like partnership to try and get this um, this business going, and then what happened after that? Um, well, mm-hmm. I um we worked on it for uh pretty much 12 months and we had a few uh, nibbles Mm -hmm. but we were dealing with public health um, and government departments and we completely underestimated the time that it was going to take to close a sale Mm -hmm. because we were selling something that was pretty cheap and we're trying to sell cheaper high volume Um, but we had to jump through so many hoops to get a single sale it was just absolutely brutal we ended up having like a three-month period where we were cold calling um, hospitals in North America from 11 p.m. at night to 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and getting nowhere. And it was really sad because our product, when you were sound, we had patients and parents of patients, you know, writing us emails saying, thanks, you know, the industry really needs this, but we couldn't monetize it. Mm. Um, and that was just, it's, it's heartbreaking. You spend 18 months building, building a business that you think is going to succeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it doesn't work out and then you've got to kind of come to terms with the fact that you know this thing that you left the you know the great <laughs> job for isn't isn't giving you what you thought it was going to give you and and then you get in this kind of limbo um and so it was while while I was in that limbo of hey this business isn't making money that um that I kind of fell back to my roots which is um which is the software stuff which is what my consultancy now does um, simply just to keep the lights on. What exactly do you do right now? How would you describe your business? Okay, so what we do now is um, is we have a consultancy and it's um, not at all related to the original business mm-hmm. um, where we go into small businesses and systemize and automate their processes. So that might be, you know, getting a new prospect all the way through to a new customer. Um, it might be um, onboarding and training staff members more effectively and having process libraries, that sort of stuff. But basically giving small businesses the tools they need to really be efficient um, and not spend all their time bogged down in the paperwork of, of running a business. Yeah, so that's what we do. But it's very much um, using modern software tools to achieve those things. Awesome. Wow, that's a very different uh, that's a very different sort of business to calling hospitals at eleven p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, great. Well, okay, so you had you came through a bit of a journey, uh, and this is where you are now, and you're enjoying what you're doing. I love it. You know, um, my my career job was to get you know get get experimental drugs to cancer patients that had run out of options, and that was really hard work, but incredibly rewarding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've I've helped a strata management company double their portfolio, and and I, that actually makes me feel better. <laughs> so as, as terrible as it sounds, you know, I, I I absolutely love what I do now, and I work with other business owners, and because the results are so tangible, and because the business owners we work with are doing it usually for really good reasons, their family, their family people, they've got they've usually got side projects that are really interesting. It's actually just great fun. And you're affecting people's lives. It's it's personal as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, that's fantastic. What is it about business that drives you? Well, I don't know. I think I'm what really drives me to work for my customers and my own business is to be the person that's able to change things for someone else, Mm -hmm. um, be the person that's able to help other people. Um, That's I think that's what really kind of lights that switch. But yeah. Um, I always wanted to have my own business, but I think the best thing I ever did was was spend that time in corporate because I, I now deal with people that have come from those backgrounds and people that have always worked in small business. Right. And the polish that people get out of coming out of those big industries yes. um, makes makes an incredible difference. So um, I think I had to I kind of had to do the time to just learn the soft skills of Oh, totally. Business. And then, yeah, to take that out then into a small business space has been... It's a bit like a training ground, isn't it? <laughs> I like the word you use, polish. It's, um, you really do come up very professional. Uh, your 
your skills are at a very, very high level. I know some people who've never been in corporate, uh, for example, they don't know, you know, the basics of how a business operates. Whereas you would have come out of corporate having a pretty good understanding of most aspects of business. It's still different to when you're running your own business, but at least you know how to relate to people um, at a business level. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know how to keep it professional. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But- <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's really interesting. I think if you grow up in small business, you certainly have those sort of the cowboy, yeah. you know, be able to do everything that a business owner needs to be able to do, which is not just the actual product. You mm-hmm. know, it's all the admin and everything behind the scenes. But when you – so but, – but then what seems to happen, what I see happening is those people end up paying a lot of money to get the soft skills of professionalism. Whereas if you come from corporate, you have the advantage of – you know, a big company throwing thousands of dollars into your education sure. and then you can basically take <laughs> those skills and hopefully, um, you know, after you've cut the t- cut your teeth with someone else's business, do your own thing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you're just going to a different level. Yeah, absolutely. How did you find this opportunity that you're currently in? Did you notice a gap in the market or did you just notice there was a trend in automation or, um, or helping people in this space? Like, how did you kind of end up doing what you're doing now? Um, I was really fortunate. I, I, my, so my family is a software family. And so I, right. I've, I've kind of got those skills. So when the first business wasn't making any money, um, I couldn't go back into pharmaceuticals because I still had that conflict. Yep. And so I basically answered an ad, um, with someone needing some IT help fixing emails and that, and the business was quite near where I live. So, I went and did that and I just absolutely, completely super lucky. Um, that business owner was an incredibly switched on woman who had been through a number of business training programs. She was a small business owner right. and she had all these ideas, but she didn't know how to implement them. Um, and I was able to understand what she was talking about and go and learn and then implement them. And I realized that, um, so I'm talking about, you know, business processes yeah. type stuff. Um, and what I realized was in the, in the time since I've been sort of doing websites on the side to get, get me through uni and, and then having this career and then coming back into IT that the market had matured. And all of a sudden there were these tools out there that were really accessible to small businesses. Yes. That other, that used to, would have been, you know, $50,000 minimum set up applications five years ago. You can now get for 40 bucks a month. And so it's incredible. Yeah, so, <laughs> and I've always been a, oh, you know, you should get something custom built because stuff off the shelf never works. And now yes. the market's matured. So I went, you know, hey, this is really cool. And then, uh, somewhere along the line, we got the next customer and the next customer. And all of a sudden we're, you know, fully resourced with, with a number of consultants under us and we're looking for stuff and it's just, it's off the hook. But right. it wasn't, it wasn't that I read the market. It was that I, I started working in it with a client. And then as I was working in it, I've been able to identify more and more opportunities. So it kind of grew organically, but you had your ear to the ground. And, you know, as you saw the need arising, you kind of just, it just grew out of, out of what you were seeing. Absolutely. And it's, and it, it's been a really different way of growing a business. The first business, you know, we worked for 18 months to build the product before we launched. Um, and then this time around, you know, I've talked to like my accountants and, um, our solicitors doing, you know, just setting up the company. And I've just said over and over again, I don't even care if our structures are inefficient. Mm-hmm. I want to have customers and money coming in the door before I worry about, you know, branding anything. Yes. So you know, let's just, because I did it the other way last time, I had the whole business perfect. <laughs> and then tumbleweeds. And no money. <laughs> and no money. Yeah. And the other thing is too, like you, you know, you, I, I, I kind of look back and think, you know, we didn't want to spend money on, say, you know, marketing and advertising, but we didn't realize that, you know, if, if I've given up my salary, my partners have given up their salaries, then we're better to pay the money up front if we need something and then be able to benefit from having that thing for the next 11 months yeah. rather than sort of limp along. So, so yeah, so this time it's been all get the customers, give the customers a really good experience and do everything that they need. But then only once you've got that happening, worry about what's the next step. 
That's really good advice. Um, I know a lot of people who they spend ages getting their business off the ground because they're trying to perfect everything. They're trying to get the perfect website. They're trying to get their business cards. They're trying to get all these things that, to be perfectly honest, are not making them any money. You know, and they, all they need to do is, is go and do the work, get paid, prove the model works, and then once you've got sufficient funds, then start to build the, the infrastructure around you. I mean, it sounds like that's what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I, the other thing is, um, I think a lot of people, um, they want to present an image of polish. Like they want to really look like they are, they are established and everyone can see through that. Yeah. So like my, my attitude with my customers is to be really upfront and say, this is, you know, maybe not, you know, cause I don't necessarily care where we're at, but you know, not, not ever try and pretend to be something that we're not. Mm. Um, but always just saying, yep, you know, this is where we're at and this is what we're doing and this is where we're about. And if you'd like to come on the journey, you know, hop on. Yeah. I like that. P- people really appreciate transparency, especially today. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. And when you got started, obviously, like any small business, you would have hit a few brick walls and things like that. You know, what were some of the challenges that you would have faced and, um, and how did you overcome them? Maybe one or two of the, the major challenges, like any small business. Um, I think the biggest, the, oh, the biggest challenge was I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and I know we throw that around all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really, I had no idea. And the thing that's gotten it kind of through to me is just being around other small business owners has been absolutely critical. So in the beginning, um, I had a friend that did the graphic design on my first um, my first business's website and, you know, I remember him telling me about what a call to action was, you know, mm-hmm. we're designing a flyer and he's like, you need a call to action. I'm like, what's a call to action? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And so, and you know, like, and he was the guy that put me onto reading Seth Godin's blog and from there, you know, I right. met someone else and that's a really big hurdle because you do, if you come from that, you know, that job where you've, you've worked your way up and you, you know, your ego is a bit big, you can think, mm. oh, well, how hard can it be? Yes. Uh, and more than likely, most of your professional friends are all still working, you know, in corporate as well. So mm-hmm. they actually don't know either. Correct. Um, so until you start tapping into a community, <laughs> yeah. no, you've got it's... nothing. It's hilarious. I look back now and I just put my hand to my face and just go, what was I do? What was I thinking? Well, I know exactly the same feeling because when I was in corporate, all my friends were in corporate, you know, yeah, and, we, and we all talked about one day doing our business, you know, but. Very few actually took that step out of corporate. In fact, you're right. Like a lot of, a lot of the, that community, they don't, they have, because they haven't been there, they don't know what it's like. And then when, once you're running your own business, you come across all these issues that you never thought you'd have to face. But unless you're with a community of people that have either been there or done that, it's pretty hard yakka, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You just reminded me, probably the other really big issue that I didn't mm-hmm. even flag was cash flow. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we had, <laughs> we've had some crackers. We're in, 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 in corporate, you know, it doesn't really matter if a bill's in arrears or if it's outstanding. They um, can survive. But, <laughs> yeah, but gee whiz, like we had, we had some times where we were just thinking, you know, how do you get like this? And it's really hard to say to yeah. your customers, come on, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've got no money for food. Can you please pay your bill? <laughs> yes. Um, and, and it's not, it's not out of malice or anything, but they no. just, you know, they just might be a bit, you know, forgetful or whatever it is. So, no, exactly um, right. probably learning about cash flow management was a huge one. Well, it's a really, really good point you bring up. I mean, I know a lot of people, um, who, have worked in corporate where, you know, the terms and conditions when you, you set payment are 90 days and you know, everyone goes up with that. And, but you can't really survive like that in small business. You need to get paid today. And I always encourage people, if you're going to do some work, sometimes it's even better to be paid up front. And for a lot of people, it's a huge mind shift to have to even say that to a customer because some people are not used to saying that. They're used to doing the work and then sending an invoice and then waiting several weeks, months and playing catch up in arrears and then like you said it throws their cash flow out but you're really as a small business owner you can call the shots you can actually put your terms and conditions together and say look this is what i normally would do but you know i'm happy to as long as i get paid maybe within seven days or or 50 percent now 50 percent later or so you can really design this so it works in your favor oh absolutely in fact it was you that, that told me back in february this year so 
10 months ago, um, you know, Christy payment up front. Um, and the, and the funny thing that I didn't expect to have happen out of that that did and actually changed my business was when we started asking for payment up front, we got a whole lot more respect. Mm. Um, and it absolutely changed the way that customers related to us as well. So it wasn't just that it solved the cash flow problem, which it did, but it was game changing in the, in the authority that we then had with that customer. Um, and, and yeah, the respect that we got. Well, I'm glad it helped, but you know, it, it's <laughs> yeah. actually, you're right. It actually adds a lot of credibility. What it says is if you want my service, you don't have to pay me right now for it rather than the other way around. It creates a level of urgency and a bit of, you know, a bit of scarcity from your time and availability. You know, it's almost like, well, I'm not mucking around. Um, if, if you want to, if you want me to do the job, uh, you, you're going to have to pay me now so I can commit the resources to working with. It's a real different level of professionalism. The other thing was learning about pricing, how to basically position our business and and realize that sometimes you don't want to say yes to things because even though it's a lump of money, mm. you actually can't deliver it for that lump of money. Um, yes. Or if you do, you know, it's gonna it's basically gonna kill your your pipeline or something in the interim. So I think probably cash flow and um and and pricing have been the big the hardest things to know because. When I was, you know, when I was in my day job, um, part of what I did was negotiate contracts for thousands of dollars with hospitals. Yeah. Uh, and it was really easy to negotiate a contract with a hospital because it wasn't my money. Yeah. And I, I didn't have any skin in the game. It's, it's really easy to negotiate when you, when it's you've not got your... nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, exactly right. When it's your money, it's your business, every dollar counts. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, 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 it's, I thought I was a good negotiator, but when I had to start negotiating for myself, uh, it was really, really a different story. So. so the whole the whole concept of cash management, financial management from a as a small business owner is really important right from day one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah cool. And you had to learn it the hard way, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, imagine if you were starting off in business, but you're you're surrounded with a community like you said, like minded people, and they could give you advice right from day one on how to manage your finances, how to track your cash flow, how to be, you know. How much would that have saved you in terms of just time and money and headaches? And <laughs> well, look, by the time we started the second business, which is the business now, we were basically out of money. Yeah. So, you know, I can tell you straight away, it was a quarter of a million dollars it would have saved me because the first, I kind of feel like if I knew what I knew now and I was able to apply it to the first business, you know, I would have, I would have saved myself a quarter of a million dollars just in the opportunity. Not, not even on what, you know, if we'd even made a cent from the business. So, yes. um, I think, yeah, like I said, you don't know what you don't know and it's really hard. And I think when I first started coming across, yeah, I, you know, started coming across the business programs and stuff, I was sort of like, yeah, 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 you know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about or this chick doesn't know what she's talking about. Mm. She's just a speaker. And now that I've been, you know, it's been three years, um, we're doing really well and I bump into those, those people and I just go, man, man, I wish I just <laughs> dropped the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you're just at a different level now where you can appreciate where they were coming from right from day one. But you just, you, you had to go through the process. Oh, of course. Yeah. So let's fast forward now to the present, Christy. So you're in your current business. You've come through this massive transition. Things are going well now, but you're a busy girl. Like you're on the move all the time. I mean, every time I talk to you, you're in a different town or a different city or you're traveling and, and um, you're delivering your training, you're meeting with clients. It seems like a pretty hectic lifestyle. How much of this is fun and do you enjoy being on this on the move constantly and how do you see this sort of playing out over the next few months? Um, we're not on the move too much. Um, okay. I guess the thing is, um, I, it's, it's work hard, play hard at the moment. So right. I have, I have incredible flexibility in that I can take a, a Wednesday off and take my nephew to the zoo. Mm -hmm. or I can take a long weekend and help my friends who are cycling from the Gold Coast back to Sydney. So that's really great. But the other side of it is, um, you know, we've got customers, um, we've actually got customers in the States, but we've got customers in Melbourne and Perth that, like us to be on site um mm -hmm. and so we go do it because it's well frankly it's great money and it's it's a really fun day yeah we've um <laughs> we learned about the um you know the a class b class and c class client from one of our customers um and so we decided that our a class client was going to be someone um that we could learn from yep. about business so we know a lot about systems and it but we don't know everything about business yes. and 
So we wanted to pick people that was that were actually successful in what they were doing. Um, and then the second thing was that we wanted to pick people that were going to be good, strong referrers because mm. that's how we built our business. Yep. And then the third class that I'm going to swear on your podcast <laughs> is that we weren't going to work for any dickheads. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so if you put that together and go, okay, well, we get to sit in front of people that are really good at business and that aren't dickheads. Work is really fun because we get paid handsomely to help business owners take their already successful businesses to the next level. Yep. But at the same time, we get to learn all day long and I love learning. So it is it is really full on and it is it is hard work, but I've got a really cool relationship with our customers where, you know, I can say to them, look, you know, I'm training for a cycling race next, next March. That's really important to me. So you're not probably going to get me for a meeting before 11 o'clock, mm. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays because I want to be out riding my bike. And they're absolutely cool with that. So yeah. we've built this culture of, you know, when it's on, it's on yes. um, and we're going to go to we're going to be in Perth from Sunday through to Thursday next week and I'll be totally spent by the end of it but you know it's right now like I just think about how much I've learnt and the people that I've been able to mix with and it's all worth it. <laughs> well you brought up another really good point so most people don't know that they, they can actually choose the level of clients or customers they work with which is really interesting not too many people actually bring this up in in conversation, most people have this uh, this notion that you know the clients always ride and and um, you're lucky with whatever clients you get. Whereas I like your approach in that you have an A, B, and a C class client, and if you could choose, why wouldn't you pick the best client you could work with? And if, if you could have the most ideal client that you could design, you know, ideally someone who you can help in their business, but that you could learn from as well, and someone who gets you know the whole lifestyle that you're trying to work towards and they, they understand that it's busy when it's busy and they understand when you need to take time off and you know they're accommodating they're, they're business owners like yourself and um, if you could work with more people like that I mean your life would just be so much more fun you know? yeah it's really hard like I I want to help everyone and yeah. it's to my detriment my business manager says to me you know, oh, do you really, you know, are you sure you want to take this customer on? Because he can see, you know, the flags that you go, this is potentially someone that we're not going to have a great working A lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to put it kindly. So yeah. um, it's actually been really hard for me to learn to say no because we're fortunate we are in the position where we can say no to work now. Mm -hmm. And when we do, we all, all, you know, obviously always make sure that person has another option. Yeah. But, um, and, and I'm not naive enough to say, oh, you know, never take a C-class client on. But, you know, once you, what, and again, Gavin, I think it was you that said this, said it to me much earlier in the year. What you want to do is cycle your, the customers you kind of had to take in the beginning, yes. cycle them out. And as you can, replace them with even better and better caliber clients. That's it. Um, and now, you know, we've got, we've got like celebrity customers yeah. in their industry and it's, and it's fantastic. And then I'll have someone that calls me and, and I sort of think, you know, you don't, you don't quite get it. There's a lot of education that you still need before we're even ready to work together. And I'm just not, I'm, I don't have the time to put in to bring you up to speed before we can even really start getting work done. Yeah. And, and having said all that, I mean, for the people that are listening to this podcast, obviously when you start off in business and you haven't got your first client, you know, you <laughs> take what you, yeah, it, like you said right at the beginning, it's cash flow, it's money in the door. But as you start maturing, as you start working out, these are the areas I like to concentrate on. These are the types of people I really enjoy working with. It's a pleasure to work with them. I don't have as many hassles with these type of customers as I have with these type. Well, you start gravitating slowly towards, you know, the, where you enjoy working. Because at the end of the day, your business should be enjoyable. It should be fun. There's no point quitting or leaving a high paying six figure income corporate job or anything really to start a business if you're not going to enjoy it. Because why would you want to leave something if you're comfortable in one area to do something that you're going to have a lot of pain? That's my belief anyway. Absolutely. You know what? Here's the other thing. Like, um, if you're only, <laughs> if you're only out there to replace your salary. Yeah. And not a cent more. And if you're only out there, you know, to keep working nine to five, then <laughs> don't go through the heartache. Yeah, don't go through the heartache. It's but if you want to have the flexibility, then you also need to be able to push back to those, you know, those crappy customers and say, because I guarantee that the B and C class customers are the ones that keep you up at night. Yeah. And that they're the ones that make you work on the weekend. And if you, if you work out the amount of time you put into them 
and their return, they're, they're never worth it. So, yeah. And it's not saying anyone is less deserving of your time. It's just who do you prefer to spend your time with? Yeah. And you get to choose. There's no right or wrong. You are responsible for the work you take on. And if you take on a job or you take on a customer, you've now got to work with that person. You know, And it's not the end of the world to let a customer go. If you can afford to do it, sometimes you need to say to someone, look, this is all too hard. You know, we're not really making any progress. It just doesn't seem to be working out. And you terminate the agreement. I mean, there's nothing bad about that. It does happen in real life. But you've got to make a call at some point if you ever have that problem. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, I think, and it's it's one of those things you you can build that sort of thing up in your head too. I think, but once you actually do it, generally the person re- you know really appreciates your candle because yeah. if it's not working, then they've felt that it's not working too. So, oh, um, I have had that once, and it was an incredible experience to go through mm. to to fire basically fire the first customer and say, you know what, this isn't working out, but I can put you in touch with three people that can help. So you're not just letting them go, but you're actually offering them another lifeline and support, which is professional. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Which is, you know, from my history in corporate. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Now, Christy, in your business at the moment, because it's growing, it's it's expanding, it's it's doing well, do you have a team that you've built around you? Like, you know, because obviously you can't do everything yourself. So how, how do you operate at the moment? Have you got others that, that work with you? Yeah, look, we've got um, – there's my partner and I, um, and my partner really runs the business, so he's he's very um, straight down the line, analytical, you know, Christy, you've got to get that invoice paid before you can start working kind of person, which right. is absolutely what I need. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got um, four or five contractors that we pass a lot of work to. Mm-hmm. Um and we're now at the point where we're looking at picking up our first staff member. And that's because, um, you know, the margins just, just are better with staff and we can afford them now. But, um, it's been really hard because I was the business in the beginning. It was really hard to realize that I wasn't the business yeah. and to pass work on and get people to do things and get people to help. Um, that's been really, really hard. So. Um, although I, I like to think I'm getting better at it. Um, it's so letting go. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's a massive challenge for a lot of business owners or first time business owners because you're right here. It is your baby. You're running with it. You've kind of seen this thing grow. It is really hard to let it go or at least delegate, but it sounds like you're getting there. Yeah. I think if you, you know, if you don't, all you are is a freelancer. Yeah. Um, and you're, you might as well have a salary job because it's not, it's, you know, it's not a holiday. It's not a job you can take a holiday from because, you know, you don't, you don't work, you don't get paid. Exactly. So, yeah, we realize that if we want to grow the business, we actually need to stop, even stop delivering um, yeah. and just running, you know, run the business like a business. So then the next question is finding the right staff. Yes. Um, which is, you know, it's tough. It's yeah, really well, that's a whole other challenge, isn't it? Because <laughs> then, then you're you're looking for growth, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> cool, awesome. Now you mentioned right at the beginning of the, the podcast that uh, it was really important that you form the community, or you you're around like-minded people or business owners that are you know doing similar things to you, so you can kind of leverage from what they've learned, and you can you can tap into their their vast knowledge base that you might not have. Where do you find the time to stay connected to people like this today? Because you're busy growing the business, you're bringing on new staff members, you're, you know, you're traveling and all of that. How do you stay connected with people that are business minded? Um, a lot of it's on Facebook. Um, okay. And um, for some reason, you know, just in this journey, my Facebook has gone from baby photos, which was really bothering me, um, <laughs> to, to all these other business owners that um, are just posting stuff and sharing knowledge so mm. i think i've got a google group uh, a google circle which is um awesome business owners right. um and i kind of i kind of keep my ear yep. ground that way um and then obviously you know conferences yes. and that sort of thing um if i meet people i i do make the effort to to connect with them afterwards and stay awesome. in touch um there's a really good discipline that uh peter shankman was talking about and it was i think it was born out of the old head of paramount studios back when they were about to go bankrupt and the guy had a rolodex and you know once a quarter he called everyone so every i think every tuesday he called three people from the rolodex or whatever it was and you just stayed in touch and 
what he found was then those people, when they had a movie idea, tended to call him. Um, and all of a sudden Paramount kind of bounced back and became this big studio again. And, um, I've seen some of my friends doing that. I know when they're doing it to me and, um, I'm trying to do that. And it's just that, that really forced, Hey, how's it going? Mm. What's going on? To start that conversation because we're all kind of living in these little bubbles. Most of us are home based. You know, we've got people in San Francisco, people in Brisbane, Melbourne, yep. Perth. Um, and you just need to kind of force that communication because it can get, um, can, you can get really yeah, isolated. Yeah, that's a good point. With technology, the great thing is you do have the flexibility to work from home these days. You, you can work remotely. It's, it's awesome. But like you said, you can also get isolated if you don't make the effort to connect. And, um, uh, I mean, that was one of the, the, I guess the joys, if you like, working in corporate or working in a large organization, you were never lonely. You were always surrounded by, you know, people, teams, uh, management, whoever, staff, clients. It was, it was busy. But when you go into that small business hub, suddenly you're, you're on your own unless you make the effort to go out and talk to people or connect through, like you said, conferences or, or even on Facebook, you still have to make an effort. The first thing I found myself doing um, with the first business, because I still lived quite near the business park where my industry mm-hmm. was based, was that I was going in for lunch, you know, three yeah. or four times a week. Um, and by the time you go in for lunch and come back, it's two, two and a half hours of yeah. a day gone, you know, conservatively. Gee, what kind of lunches did um, you go for? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I come from I come from rural right. farmer. <laughs> um, so you know, chocolate fountains and yeah. suckling kids. So the other thing is too, what that was me doing really was just clinging on to to the old ways of doing things, and actually, I wasn't learning anything about what I was trying to do. Um, I was just staying in touch with my friends, which is absolutely important, but you know, very different to the people I talk to now because the people I talk to now. Are business owners as well. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of cutting the cord a little bit and ex- and finding those new people that are going to help rather than just sort of the social yeah. aspect. And the other place I've, I've found them, I guess, is through user group communities and those sort of meet up places. And there are heaps of Facebook groups, you know, Sydney startups and I can't even think oh, of Oh, there's them. so many. Well, there's <laughs> new ones popping up every day. And if you haven't found one or if there isn't one in your area, well, you can start one, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. And, you know, the other thing that um, I was really surprised about, and it, but it makes a bit more sense now, is people that have achieved business success sincerely want to help the, the next That's generation. Really point. They've been through so much pain. I used to think, you know, what does this, what does this millionaire want with me? We've got one of our mentors runs a really successful print mm-hmm. media business. She, we live up on the central coast. She'll come up and have lunch with us and just tell us, you know, and talk. And I think what it is, is she's realized that, that we are actually putting our money where our mouth is and actually building a business and not just being one of those people that talks about one day going to have yeah. a business. And once those established business people see that in you, they will do anything. Yeah, so. yeah it's so true. I, I've met so many very successful business owners who, you know, once upon a time, you, you wouldn't think that they would want to spend the time to help or talk to anyone, but you'd be surprised. They're some of the nicest people you'd meet. And like you said, they've been through so much pain that they just can't wait to help someone, to be honest. Like they've got so much knowledge to give back. And, um, you know, it's a nice way of paying it forward. One of the user groups I go to monthly, you know, I sit in that room and think, okay, um, we're really good at, we really get the software, but we're surrounded with, you know, people that have been writing for the fin for a decade or, you know, people that have the biggest non-bank lender in the country and you just, you kind of have to check yourself and go, wow, you know, these people are seeing me as a peer and they're asking and helping and giving guidance and, and it's it's really cool. So I don't know how I fell into those communities, but... <laughs> Um, that would be probably a big piece of advice is if you can start mixing with other business owners rather than people that have day jobs, that does yeah. wonders. So just, Good just advice. Be Good advice. <laughs> cool. So now what we're going to do, Christy, is we're going to get into the section um, that we do with all of our guests. It's called Rapid Response. It's it's a really quick fire sort of yell out the, the first sort of thing that comes to your mind. I'm just going to hit you with five questions. and um, So not a lot of time to think, but it's just – quick glimpse into how you kind of operate. How, do you want to play this game? Okay, sure. <laughs> I don't know how quick it'll yeah. be. Okay, we'll see. All right, so 
Um, favorite mode of learning? For video, audio, reading, something else? Your favorite style? Oh, I think I like to read. Um, um, I find I read a lot online, but it doesn't sink in. But give me a book. Okay, so you're a reader. Great. For sure. All right. What's the most influential book or video or podcast or anything like that that you would want to recommend to someone if they're getting started in this? Oh, you know, there isn't one. It's just it's just always reading little bits mm-hmm. and pieces and they slowly congeal into a world okay. view, I think. Um, although Crossing the Chasm, I can't remember who it was by, um, was yes. a really good one. Simon's Neck stuff's good. Oh, Seth Godin stuff's awesome. good, although it's getting yeah. a bit old. No, no, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Now, do you have a favourite role model or a hero that you look up to and, and why? Oh, that's a really good one. Probably my second client, um, a guy called Ozzy mm-hmm. Pizzano. He runs a strata management company. Um, because he is absolutely focused on his business but a complete family man and everything he does is, you know, for the benefit of his kids, but he's a game changer in his industry and he doesn't care what the industry thinks. And when they say, oh, you can't do that, he'll go and try it anyway. <laughs> I love that too. Do you have a favorite or memorable client out of all the people that you work with? Maybe it's that same guy. I don't know. Or does any, anyone stand out? <laughs> um, you know what? I've got really close relationships with a lot of <laughs> yeah. my clients. Um, that guy, you know what? That guy is probably yeah. right up the list. Um, he jokes about being my Does favorite he? customer. <laughs> Um, but there was a, there was a conference that I really wanted to get to in the US earlier in the year. And at the time we had like $30,000 in outstanding mm-hmm. invoices. And he actually fronted the money oh, for wow. me to go. Um, and I, I was talking to him not long ago and I said, you know, like I've, I've thanked him a hundred times for it. And he said, you know, the reason that I wanted you to go, Christy, is that I knew that that conference was going to change your life and you just had to be there. And I think because he's been a business owner and he's gone through that journey, he saw what a missed opportunity yeah. it was. Um, and so, and it wasn't an insignificant amount of money. He basically bought a bunch of our time yeah. in advance. Um, but, you know, just it's it's really cool to have that, that you know, that relationship. And it wasn't that I asked him, like, he said, you know, hey, what, when's your flight? And I said, you know what, I actually can't afford to go. Um, so... He, you know, he's taught me an awful lot about business and he's probably because he's been along yeah. for the ride Perfect. as well. Um, but I've got a lot of respect awesome. for that guy. And now, do you have a favorite course that you're passionate about? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I worked in medical research for too long and I think, um, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I, I think, no, okay. not really, sadly. I think I've got the cause of, of people being fulfilled and I want people to be able to go and do what that's they want to do. I think that's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not no, a charity, though. No, no, that, that's perfect. Now that we we are where we are, where do you see this journey of yours taking you as we fast forward to the future? You know, you've got a vision for what you'd like to achieve, and you know, how does the next sort of five years or, or wherever beyond look like? You know, there's a there's a lot of pressure in the industry mm-hmm. that I'm in. Um, it's in it's the right at the beginning of the wave. Automating small business is just a huge thing right now. Um, and we're really well placed, you know, we're, we're highly, highly respected for what we do and, and we're the leaders in Australia. Um, but with that, there's a lot of pressure to really consolidate our position and be, stay in the yep. front of the wave. So the next five years, the next, the next two years is going to be consolidating that position and actually building out a really bomb proof business rather than, you know, this, this sort of seven person group that we have right now that's working and making great money, but you know, isn't yeah. formalized. So putting all those structures, in, I think, is, is probably <laughs> all the work. <laughs> no, done. that's great. At least you've got a nice roadmap ahead and, and um, got something to work to. Chrissy, thanks so much for spending the time today and you know, just sharing a lot of those insights. I know that members that are listening to this on this podcast would have got a lot of great nuggets of wisdom, if you like, um, because you know it's it's tough out there. And unless unless you come across information like this, I know. We didn't have podcasts when I first got into business seven years ago. You know, again, this is all a new tool, and uh, it's great that we can share information like this. Yeah, it's a great time to be starting out. There's just so much out there that you can go and find. Yeah. So, with your business, if people want to find out a little bit more about what you do and how to get in touch with you, you know, where's the best place you can send? Uh, okay, so well, you can jump on our website, uh, and that is Benelds, um, com au. So b e n e l d s dot com dot au. 
um, that's the best place to find us. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, I wish you all the best in your business. And, um, Thanks, Gavin. Let's keep in touch. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing with us. Excellent. No problem at all. Thanks, Gavin. If you like this podcast and would like to understand a little bit more about what was just discussed, then you're in luck. Simply head over to breakfreefromcorporate.com and we have a fantastic bonus gift waiting for you to download. All we ask in return is that you leave us a review on iTunes and or Stitcher, whichever you use. And lastly, help us share this podcast around with your friends, your colleagues through Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus or LinkedIn. We truly appreciate all your support and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode of Break Free From Corporate. Once again, to access previous and all future episodes, visit breakfreefromcorporate.com and subscribe today.